Years ago when I was eight, my family lived in this big weird house, kind of on the edge of a small town. The school district was in the middle of a big restructuring, so even though we were only a couple grades apart, my brother and I went to different schools and took different buses. This left me as the last person to leave in the morning and the first person to get home in the afternoon, which meant it was my job to make sure all the lights were off and the door was locked. One morning I noticed the basement door was open and the light was on, so before I left I turned off the light and closed the door. When I got home that afternoon the light was on and the door was open again. I just assumed that I'd forgotten to actually take care of it when I noticed it in the morning. So I went over to turn off the light and close the door. When I got to the top of the basement stairs, I looked and there was a big shadowy male figure towards the bottom of the staircase. I freaked out, slammed the door and pushed a bunch of boxes against it and then went and hid in my closet. For months, I didn't tell my family because I was positive what I had seen was a ghost and didn't think anyone would believe me. Then, about a year after that incident, my mom and her boyfriend realized that small amounts of money had been going missing for months, totaling around $800 to $900 but never more than $60 at once. So we all walked around the house with flashlights trying to figure out how they could have gotten in. Turns out some creep was climbing in through a small hole in the outside of the house, shimmying through a crawl space, then coming up into the house through the basement. Realizing I had been alone in the house with him on at least one occasion was one of the worst, most terrifying moments I've ever had. My friend had this neighbor who was a retired mechanic. They lived on some properties with large front lawns and long driveways. His neighbor had a couple derelict cars parked up near his garage that he took parts from occasionally. This neighbor of his started hearing noises while sitting in his living room, coming from his front yard. Every time he'd go to the window, there would be nothing there. He assumed it was a raccoon or a coyote or whatever. He kept hearing the noise so he'd go outside to look around but would find nothing. He'd put out traps and occasionally catch something yet the noise persisted. Soon, he started claiming that he was hearing voices coming from the front yard, like whispering. He'd go outside and look around the perimeter of his property but would find nothing. It was persistent so he'd started calling the cops. Every time the cops came and looked around and would find nothing. So they told him he needed to stop calling them for this and perhaps get a security camera or whatever. So this guy thought he was losing his mind. One summer evening he couldn't sleep, so he went to the back patio to smoke a cigarette. Suddenly, he heard voices coming from the front of his house. He put his cig out and snuck around to the front and got there just in time to see the doors to his derelict conversion van silently shut. He ran back to the backyard and went inside his home and called the police to tell them what he had seen. The police arrived and approached without lights or sirens, and when they approached the van, the door swung open and a bunch of people ran out in every direction. Upon searching the van, the cops found syringes and paraphernalia and determined that people were shooting up in there. A bunch of girls in my friend group decided to have a night out and ended up at the local gay club. I can't remember why I didn't go, but I'm sort of glad I wasn't there. However, I also wish I had been, so I could have helped. Anyway, they noticed a girl on the dance floor who looked super out of place. She had sweatpants and a t-shirt on, and wasn't wearing makeup, and had her hair in a ponytail. She also had a backpack on. Basically, the exact opposite of typical club attire, and not at all what someone would usually wear to this place. They said that she seemed very dazed as well, and more importantly, there was a very large man grabbing her and grinding on her, and she was just kind of standing there letting it happen. One of my friends tried approaching her to ask if she was alright, but the guy spoke for her and insisted that he was her boyfriend, and that she'd just had too much to drink, but that she was okay. Everyone was suspicious, but at that point there wasn't much else they could do, so they just kept an eye on the two of them. Eventually the guy left the dance floor to go to the bar, and my friend was able to talk to this girl again. She said that she was extremely out of it, and that it seemed more likely that she had been drugged, rather than just drunk. The girl managed to convey that she didn't know the man she was with, and wanted to leave. So my friend grabbed her and made for the exit, but not before this guy came back. He immediately flipped out, got right in my friend's face, and started screaming at her. It escalated to the point that he eventually swung at my friend who just barely dodged the punch. Thankfully, someone else had went and found a security guard, and they were able to prevent this guy from hurting anyone, meaning that my friends and the girl were all able to leave safely. 
She was still super messed up when they left, so nobody could get the full story out of her. But she did say that the guy had been following her around town all day. The really scary part is that the bar staff couldn't technically do anything other than throw this guy out after my friends had left. One of them called the cops and gave them a description of the guy, but they said they couldn't really do much other than be on the lookout for him. So chances are that he's still out there somewhere and may do this again.